Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Kick your feet up as I give a recap of the TLC original series, 90 Day Fiance. I'll give a preseason recap as well as the season finale entitled Stranger in a Strange Land. That's all coming up next. It's Bunny. So we go to Lisa and Usman, and they are still in his hometown. And this particular day, they need to go to a goat farm because for Lisa, this would be a good offering to get his mother's blessing to get married. The goat is a sign of respect. And of course, in typical Lisa fashion, as soon as she gets to the goat farm, she's complaining. She's talking about how it looks and she's talking about how it smells. Now, look, I'm a Texas girl and I've been to a farm and I love the animals, but it's going to stink a little bit. Okay. She's even complaining about how skinny the goat are. And Usman is trying to tell her they, that they're skinny now, but the point is to fatten them up so later they can be used for me. They go to ask the gentleman how much is the goat, and the translation in USD dollars is $115. And she says, did he charge me that because I'm white? And she thinks that he's boosted the price because she's white. And I'm thinking, this is a steal. You are buying a goat for $115. And not even that, let's just say he charged you 1000 Wouldn't you say that that would be worth it because this is the gift that you're giving to the mother to get the blessing for the marriage? And what makes it more comical to me is that she pulls out the money out of a Michael Kors bag. <laughs> Come on now, Lisa. Think about it. So Vera and Godfrey, they're still sitting down on the stoop of her hometown school, and they're still having some situations where he really wants to tell her about his past, about being in prison. And he finally musters up enough courage to tell her that, hey, I went to jail, and the reason why I went to jail was because I sold drugs and I was in there for two years. And she's taken back with that and gets very angry and says, I can't even believe that you would even do something like that. And she's insulted because a cousin of hers died from drugs. And she said, did you not think about how many lives that you destroyed? And he's telling her, I thought about that. Like, I, I know the impact, and she's steady going in. What about your sons? What about what would they think? And she, he's like, I, I, I know, it's terrible. I can't believe that I did it. And just really just beating them down with it. And she says, if you told me that before we started dating, I wouldn't have even been talking to you. And I'm thinking, wow, take it easy on the guy. I know it's a big secret, but he paid his dues, dues to society, and it was years ago. But he really doesn't specify when. He just says... You know, he went to prison and I'm like, dude, you know, you should have told her that it was a long time ago. But to some people, it doesn't matter how long ago it is. He still did the crime and she's not feeling too great about it. And she's saying that maybe we should put this on pause so she can think about it. But translation to me that says I need to call another American who doesn't have a felony past. So we go back to Rosa and Ed. <laughs> And Ed is very uncomfortable in Rosa's hometown. And he's telling her, hey, it's, it's really rainy. And she's telling him, like, yeah, it's a rainy season. <laughs> so we have Rosa's dad who comes over and he wants to sleep with them to keep an eye on his daughter because he doesn't trust them. And Ed is just like, wow, I've never... I've never had anybody ask me to sleep, you know, with a girlfriend before. This is just really weird. And he's just still not understanding that you're in another country, okay? People have different customs, so of course you wouldn't understand it. And Ed is seeing her living conditions that are pretty bad. It's raining. There's water coming from the ceiling. And she's like, I, I know it's, I know that there's water coming in, but this is my life. This is, this is how I live. And Ed is seeing the rain come down and it's touching electrical wires. And he's like, are we safe? Are we, are, are we okay? And he's like, almost trying not to go into panic mode. And she's telling him, you're going to be fine. Calm down. You're getting scared. Just relax. And she tells him, look, I'm going to change for bed. And when she leaves the room, he literally says out loud with his hand on his head, like, what the F am I doing here? Why am I here? I can't believe 
<laughs> that I'm doing this. So as they get ready for bed, he notices she's just laying on this little thin comforter slash mattress little padding. And he's just like, wow, I'm really worried because with my skin condition, I have to sleep with certain amount, a certain thread count, like a thousand thread count. And he says, I sent the, the sheets over to where she lives, but it didn't arrive. So now I'm just wondering what's going to happen with my skin. And he's really questioning. He's saying, looking at her living conditions, wow, is she really just using me to get to America? Because this is pretty bad. Stephanie and Erica, wow. It, it, they're not having too much fun. And you could feel and see the tension since the argument, since the last dinner. But they're going to Erica's hometown. And Erica wants her to meet her family and her friends. And well, not specifically her family, because we learned that Erica still hasn't come out to her family either. So Erica tells her friends about the argument and Stephanie doesn't like that because she thinks that you're putting out a notion about me and I haven't even met him yet. And you're telling them our business. And Erica's just like, this is just so controlling. You're telling me I can't talk to my friends and do certain thing. And and I want to talk to them. I want to tell them what's going on in my life. And you have a problem with that. They get in the car, they're on their way to the hometown, and Erica's just like, we got to talk. Like, we keep brushing this under the rug, but we really need to talk, and we have time. But Stephanie is just like, I don't think we need to talk about this on a long ride in a moving vehicle, which I thought was really strange because that's the perfect time because you got plenty of time. <laughs> You're sitting in a car <laughs> for two hours. That's the perfect time to think about it, I mean, to talk about it, so... You know, she eventually, Stephanie, apologizes for coming off as controlling. And she says, that's, you know, me being like that, that's probably just me getting to a point where I didn't know what was going on in the past. And now I feel like I have to take control because before I didn't have control in my life over certain things. And she apologizes for her behavior. So then we got David. Oh, my goodness. Creepy Dave. And he's still in Ukraine. And... He's completely clueless about everything. He's not putting two and two together that this individual works for a company and she's going to tell him any and everything to get paid. Like, I don't understand it. And he really, really looks like a madman trying to find this random person in this foreign land. And then he says, you know, it's going to take him eight hours to get to the area of where this person allegedly lives and he seems very psycho and, and desperate like wow you already had somebody tell you that the roads are pretty scary and a lot of people get flat tires because the roads are really really crappy You're going into a war zone area where people are not getting along and you still want to go and find this person so he prepares to get up and at him to take this journey to find this mystery person he starts to take this long journey and later on in the evening, he unfortunately gets a flat tire and he's changing the tire. I mean, he is driving nonstop to get to this area. Once he gets through all of that and he arrives, he's walking around like some madman, like trying to find this random person. And he's saying to himself, you know, maybe I should go online to see if she's online. Maybe she's told me something and he's not getting a message. It's just kind of like, you know, well, maybe she's offline, just completely just clueless. And he says, well, you know, I'm going to go to this local candy shop that she talks about that she goes to all the time. And then maybe the clerk can tell me if she's seen her. He goes to the front desk, uses an app that can translate what he needs. And the lady is just like, no, I've never seen this person before. I don't know who that is. And it's just really, really creepy and really, really weird. And he's saying, well, if this person goes to this candy shop all the time and the clerk doesn't know who that is, that's a red flag. You think, do you think it's a red flag? That That's the only red flag you got there? Okay, moving on. Ash and Avery. They go and they leave because they're going to go on a nice getaway where they can see some exotic animals. And Avery still feels like there's a lot of things that they haven't discussed yet. You know, he keeps sweeping things under the rug and he's really not being 100 percent 
with her. They're trying to have a good time, but you can still see that Avery is bothered and she doesn't feel 100% comfortable. She really wants to meet the ex-wife and the son, and Ash doesn't understand that. Well, why would she want to speak rude to my ex-wife? I don't understand. What would she ask her, you know? And she's just like, this is something, if we're talking about marriage and we're talking about something serious, I need to have some type of understanding and communication because that is the mother of your child, and he just can't understand that. And then we learn that Ash still hasn't gotten enough mustard to talk to his ex-wife to let her know about this situation. So it makes it even more kind of suspect that you have yet to tell her that yet. I mean, why don't you just come out, Ash, and let her know that you're a player? It's probably the same stuff that you were doing in your marriage. Tom and Darcy. Wow. Tom is just really, 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 really just painting himself as just a jerk. But surprisingly, he feels a, pretty bad about the situation and what he said to Darcy and he was angry. So he calls his sister um, looking on to the harbor, you know, and he calls his sister and his sister is just, I don't know, she's she looks very interesting the way that she pops on the phone, kind of like her face is like two inches away from the phone. And you got to remember, she never liked Darcy anyway. She was, you know, trying to tell Darcy, look, my, my brother, he's all over the place. He's a playboy. He's not trying to do anything serious. What makes you think that you're going to change his way? So she did try to give her a little warning. And he's telling her about the argument and how he was kind of, you know, mean to her and Surprisingly, his sister says, well, you know, did you go after her? Um, because you're telling me that she stormed out of the room. And he's just like, no, I didn't. I didn't go after her at all. And, you know, he feels a little bad about the way things went down. But I'm not just I'm not feeling too good about Tom. He just handled it just a little too bad. Um, and Darcy, poor Darcy, she's still at the hotel. Her heart is broken. And she makes these comments about, you know, no one likes to be alone. You know, we're humans and we all like, you know, companions. But if your being and your wellness depends on somebody else, seems like Darcy really needs some counseling about why she's so afraid and sad to be by herself. And also, she has to take responsibility in who she's picking and how she's picking them. It goes both ways, Miss Darcy. So, Ed... <laughs> Rosa Ed was so uncomfortable and miserable. He he's just saying over and over again, you know, I can't I can't stay here. He slept absolutely terrible. He looks like he was hit by a bus. And she asked him, you know, you didn't sleep, and he's just like, I I did I didn't sleep all night. I I could not sleep. You know, what I was laying on was completely soaked and wet. As soon as possible, I need to find a hotel. Can you ask your dad if you can leave with me like on a little vacay and come with me to the hotel? And you know what? Don't ask him. I'll go ahead and ask him. Um, just as as a sign of respect, I want to just look him in the eyes. Even though there's this language barrier, he kind of just wants to leave, let him know what he wants to do, and <laughs> go to the hotel. And before they leave, the dad is telling Ed, hey, you know, I want to take a shower. I want to go ahead and wash up with you. And Ed is just like, with him, with, with your dad? And she's like, yes, culture. You know, in our culture, it's not taboo to want to bathe or in front of wash up in front of family. It's really not a big deal. And it is this hilarious scene of them <laughs> trying to take this bath, you know, um, and the water's freezing and you could just, just tell he's just so uncomfortable and, and just out of it. So Usman and, and Usman, excuse me, and Lisa, they get dressed and Lisa gets dressed in his traditional attire and he's really excited about that and he helps her to get dressed and he's you know telling the producers that I've never brought anyone to see my mom and Lisa is the first one not only that she's older she's white and she's American and my mother just thinks that you know she wants to take me away and to be a slave so um after he told his mother about the about Lisa he does explain and let us know that his mom didn't speak to him for three months. That's kind of bad that she already has this energy of, I don't like this. And now you're taking Lisa to go 
meet your mom. So, ooh, he wants her to meet the mother and all of the elders. And Lisa's saying, well, you know, I need to wear some makeup. Do I need to put on some makeup? And he's telling her these are elders. They're not impressed with makeup. So putting on makeup would just be a waste of your time. Don't worry about it. Erica and Stephanie, they meet one of her friends and the friend immediately catches the vibes. She's saying that Erica is naturally this bubbly, fun, outgoing person. And she doesn't see that when Stephanie is around. They've only been around each other for so long. And you would think newbies would be hugging, cuddling, you know, flirting. And she sees none of that, which is what a lot of viewers are saying. There's no connection at all. And she really doesn't like the fact that it's starting off on the wrong foot. And Stephanie also learns that Erica's friends, pretty much a majority of them, she's had some sexual history with. And Stephanie doesn't like that too much. So you got him, you got Dave, he's still acting like a creep and still looking for this mystery person. And he eventually goes back to the hotel to get back online. And he does receive a message saying that if he would like to speak with her. But here's the thing. It looks very automated. It looks like this person was offline for this these services and now they're back online. Do you want to speak with this person again? That's what it looks like. And he's getting really happy. And he's like, whoa, you know, after that, you know, everything that she did before that, you know, we can just forget it and start all over again. He's just so clueless about what's going on. Godfrey and... Um, it's just very, very sad that after he opens up that she's still upset. I think making a good guess, she'll use this as an excuse not to talk to him anymore because they really weren't bonding anyway. <laughs> we have another scene where Ed and Rosa, they go to her dad's pig farm. And when they go to the pig farm, Ed has on these Nike shoes, which are rubber. And if you've ever been to a farm, you need to wear some boots. Uh, boots are really, really necessary so you don't slide all around. Um, and he, what makes it even worse, he puts plastic over his shoes so he can walk around, which is even worse. So he's slipping and sliding all over the place. And he can't even feed the, feed the pigs right because he's just sliding all around in the mud. And we also learned that her father lives... In the pig farm, he sleeps with the pig. So his living arrangements are even more poor than where she lives because at least she has some sort of a surrounding and she was actually physically in a building. He's actually in this kind of built crate area um, with the pigs. But he does ask the dad if she can go away with him kind of on this, you know, kind of little mini vacation with him to the hotel. And he does give them the blessing to do so. It's really, really bubbling with tension between Erica and Stephanie. And Erica's just like, you're not affectionate. You don't flirt. You tell me to delete an app from my phone. You get upset because you can't control everything. And then you're mad because I can't just pick up and move and go to, to New York. You're just very controlling and you're telling me to do a lot. And you're just not showing me in any way, shape, or fashion that you like me. And Stephanie plays the crying, docile role, but we don't even see any tears. But Erica is really, really upset. And she says, you know, you're talking about how you want to sleep on the couch and how you want to go away, but you're not even trying. And if you like me, you would at least try. And Stephanie isn't e con even consoling Erica, which is just really interesting. She's crying her owls, eyes out, and it just seems really awkward. I just wish Stephanie would just be honest and say, are you curious to a bisexual relationship? Are you confused about maybe your sexuality or it just doesn't seem like she's really too affectionate. You went to from being very sexual and flirty online and then when you see her, it's just not working. I don't know what the situation is. Maybe they just are not gelling together like Godfrey um, and, and his so-called girlfriend. But Stephanie needs to be honest. Is this what you want or not? Stop wasting Erica's time. And then the pivotal moment of the episode, we have Usman and Lisa, and they come to the family to speak with the elders and the mother. 
and you could just feel the tension. As soon as we see the mother and the family, I don't know if you guys are big on feeling people's energy, but I'm a big energy person. I believe you could feel people's energy if they have good intentions or not. And they seem as if they are really feeling Lisa's negative energy. And what didn't help is the fact that Lisa has this very stern, abrasive look, looking them in the eyes. I think it would have at least helped if, I don't know if it's in their culture or not, but extend a hand, a handshake, ask for a hug. She just sits down and starts to just have this look on her face as if she's demanding an answer like, here's your goat, that ought to do it. But the family is just not getting good vibes from Lisa. And they're really kind of looking around and looking at her. And he explains to the family how he's there to receive the blessing for marriage. And they want to know before they even get to that, what does she do in America? And she explains that she's a hospice home care um, employee. <laughs> but um, Usman, or Usman says that she's a doctor in America. And that's two different careers. <laughs> I don't know if he tried to make that seem like it was more than what it was, but she was not a, she's not a doctor, boo. Um, but the mother is saying, you know, when speaking to the producers and the, the, the siblings are saying that they were expecting someone younger. They were expecting someone from their area. Um, and she's older and white. And, you know, they're considering that because they say, hey, I heard that white people don't treat, treat black people well over there, which was very like, wow, it's, 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 it's known around the world that it's, it's no secret how black people are treated in America. She's thinking about her, her son. She's looking past what he wants. So after a good sit down of silence and only a few words here and there, Usman tells Lisa, they said no. And not just no, I mean capital no. <laughs> And Lisa seems distraught and saying, I may go back to America single, but mm, the way that she behaves and her behavior and, and, and her negative energy, it wouldn't surprise me that no matter what the mother would say, she would still want to get married to him. And not even just in Nigerian culture, but just the motherland, period. You can't do the family wrong and go another way and have evil intentions because that energy will always follow you. So Lisa needs to be aware of that. Please be nice to your future husband if that's what you really want because so far you've bossed him around. You belittled where he lives. You belittled his country. You've belittled how they bathe. Like every little thing she's criticized. If this is somebody that you truly love, you need to understand the customs respect the customs, respect the family. And it's really not something that she's been doing. I feel the same way with a lot of individuals who have met their significant other in a different country. And that's something that they need to work on, understanding the customs, understanding the culture. Now with Ed, his employee even told him, hey, watch out, because a lot of women in that area are really, really poor and they'll do any and everything to get out of that impoverished situation. But that's the end of the episode. What did you think? Wow, it's so much going on. This crescendo of, of, of information of couples and what they're going through. The fantasy of this perfect relationship gets that electric shock of reality and saying internet information and seeing each other face to face and physically being around each other are two totally different things. Subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts and follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, official bun underscore A. E. Until next time, check out other shows and movies on the playlist. See you later. Bye.